This is Mariah. She's smart, witty, and incredibly fun, and an amazing creative. This is Tony. She's a little wild, refreshingly candid, and an overcomer. And she makes me laugh. We want to invite you to join us on a cross-country journey as we meet new friends. We'll laugh and cry and have our faith challenged to the core. We'll be learning from women who thrived in adversity. Women with the courage to wait and listen to the voice of God. Women of Moxie. We're about to meet jewelry designer Katie Lewis. She and her husband Robert have four boys and just recently welcomed a girl to the family. Katie is able to turn her experiences of loss and hopelessness into defiant joy. So here we go, Katie Lewis. I don't know what we're getting ready to walk into, if I'm gonna be honest. Well, it's weird because this is the only time the our Daily Bread production team specifically yeah. asked that we do not do research. I just don't even know what to look forward to because I don't know. All I know is that she makes jewelry. And, oh, and she has five kids. And she has five kids. Of all the episodes, this is probably the one where we're the most like, where are we going? Where are we going? What are we getting ourselves into? Okay. Okay, let's see. Do you see anything that says Go straight. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Where are we actually at? Okay, we're in a parking lot. <laughs> I want to be excited, I do, but also so much construction and dirt. We need to figure out which unit it is. I think they oh. put it in my calendar. Let me look. Oh There's a number, 17A. Oh my gosh, okay. He's Should in the construction. Help? Okay, 17A, dear Mushka. Boom, we're here. I can ring the doorbell. Hi guys, we're here, let us, oh wait. Okay. Oh! Different entry. Oh! <laughs> Hello. 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 My ride. Welcome to dear Mushka. Hi. We didn't know what to expect, honestly. I know, okay. it's a little sketchy out there, but in here, <laughs> it's great. Look at how pretty the little dots. This oh. product just came out with our new spring line. Oh, I'm in. Cute. I'm right. Cute. This Cute. like this Cute. color that you got on, girl. Well, this is what I'm yeah. I'm a mushka girl. <laughs> yeah, mushka. Okay, what does mushka mean? I'm like, yeah. I'm a mushka right. girl. Mushka okay. is one of the more unusual words I think right. I've ever heard. I know. Heard. It yeah. means little one with big eyes. It was the term of endearment my mom gave me <gasps> growing up. It's Russian. Russian. She just loved the term. This is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. What you doing over here, Carrie? I'm Carrie? making some necklaces. You're making the jewelry right now? Yeah. It's she happening right now in this moment. All in-house, yeah. Wow. Look at this! You guys come sit down. We're gonna sit down over here. I'm yeah. down. Get cozy, you guys. Okay, Mushka. Yes, my mom called me Mushka growing up, mm -hmm. and she passed away right after mm -hmm. I got married. Mm -hmm. And I all of a sudden didn't have my mom as I was trying yeah. to figure out like married life, what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. And I so wished I had stories from my mom's mm -hmm. first year of her marriage to my dad. And so I decided I was gonna start a blog called Dear Mushka, which was letters to my future children in case they ever found themselves in the same situation, at least oh. I would have my first year of marriage documented. Oh. Was kind of my thinking. I did that for years. Years. Fast forward, the Lord calls our family to adoption. Oh, gosh. And yeah. so I turned my blog into a tangible love story through an Etsy shop. I was like, I can put a pendant on a chain and that'll just be $10 towards our adoption fund. And you know, one oh, thing- I get, I'm, it all hit me just at one time. Yeah. You funded the adoption fund, with this business. I mean, it covered almost the whole adoption. It was incredible. What? It's only through the Lord. Our, our stuff is not that amazing. So God calls us to adoption and we decide on a boy and a girl name. You know, who knows what's okay, gonna be, know but we've got this on. boy name that it's the only one we like, you know? Yeah. And we get paired with a birth mother who is okay with us adopting her precious son if we use the name that she's chosen. But she's like, okay, the name I want you to use is Brooks. It's her family name. Y'all, Brooks was the name we had chosen. No, no. That's not even a common name. That's not even a common name. And the whole what time we had been praying about? this verse from Isaiah over him, I have called you by name, you are mine. I mean, it was really like God was mm -hmm. like, I have got you. Look mm -hmm. at every single detail mm -hmm. that I'm gonna cover. And so our oldest one. <laughs> well, I am overwhelmed. Name, <laughs> just, and yes. Um, I don't think either one of us was <laughs> anticipating this. 
wow. I'm just fully into mm. the situation. I need to bring myself out of this moment. Right? So we, we can continue. Continue. I know. I, 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 I want to see keep all the going. things. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. Y'all come walk. Okay. And I'll show you some stuff. Oh, you got beanies. Yeah, girl, look. Oh. This is the salt and the light beanie. Of Take course. Take your color pick and comes in child sizes too. For Sammy Sign Rammies. my kids up. Right, don't you want Sign Sammy my children to wear these? Oh, oh my gosh. So this business is called Dear Mishka, which was from my mom. I'm gonna take us back. I was the oldest of three kids, mm -hmm. and I, I feel like I had a really good childhood, mm -hmm. you know, on one level. Um, my parents were both physicians, but the truth was that there was some darkness mm -hmm. underneath. There was a lot of brokenness, yeah. and I don't think we talked about it a lot growing up. We didn't talk about it in our family. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about it mm -hmm. to outside people, yeah. not necessarily because we were trying to be perfect. I think it's just... It's hard to hiding. talk about yeah. stuff. It's hard to bring people into that. But I've learned that it's really important. And mm. I want to share more about that with you guys. Ooh, okay. Can we do that? I yeah. love that. Okay, but I want to do it not here. Okay, no, no. Will you come I back know. to my house with me? That oh, feels more yes. intimate. Like this sure. is our place business, but I want to invite you into our home. Come in. Aww. I feel like you need to see pictures of my family. Is this your doppelganger? Do you think so? That's interesting. Are you yep. related? Okay, that's my mom. Look at that. That looks like look you. Alike. Look how I'm just looking at her you so love her. You love her. lovingly. My mom yeah, was my her. BFF growing up. Yeah. She was Aww. so fun. We had a jukebox in our house growing up. No, you did it, not. Yes, like an old timey jukebox. Play Elvis all the time. I mean, our house Dancing. was just full of music. The sweetest I love memories. This. Mm. And then this is my family now. Oh my gosh, look at, oh. They're looking at you like you like They're, your mama. Yes. I never made that connection. Oh. Yeah, look, that's literally happening so right now in this moment. Yeah. You're a sweetie family. So we're gonna go in the greenhouse, y'all. If oh, I can tell I you, I need to dig in the dirt to tell you my story. Right, girls, come wow. on. Oh my gosh. Isn't this fun? Oh, this is very beautiful. Calm and quiet. Oh, there's real insects up in here. We are outside. I wanted to bring you to the greenhouse because this is where the Lord has met me. I, growing up, and even now sometimes, am tempted to just go like straight for the bouquet. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, like the full thing. Yes, yeah. we're just gonna jump yeah. right to beauty. So my mom died, she's in heaven with Jesus. I'm gonna see mm. her one day again. Flowers, flowers, yeah. flowers. But what I really want us to focus on is the dirt. Because without soil, without dirt, you don't have any flowers. And really, the dirt is where the nutrients are. That's where a flower grows and thrives and turns into something so beautiful. Mm. So we're gonna plant flowers. You guys are gonna choose a, a packet of seeds. Yes. Which one is the least colorful? <laughs> this the is shop. gonna be brown. <gasps> That's my girl. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm gonna do that one. Mm -hmm. That one's it. Isn't that so fun? Chocolate lace flower. I think I'm gonna do the you know, Cinderella. It's so Cinderella. rare that I like have my hands in the dirt that I'm just, just gonna, gonna, go I'm just gonna let it go. Like uh, I already have dirty, you know, looking fingernails. I'm idea. not gonna do that. <laughs> I put on a little, no. uh, yeah. little gloves here. Yeah, just start yeah. filling up your tray. Okay. okay. So I've told you some about my mom and how she was my best friend, but we had a dichotomy in our home. It was kind of a mm. both and. Sometimes she was awesome and um, sometimes she was really sick with depression mm. and anxiety. My whole childhood, I can remember seasons, you know, where she was in her room mm. for a really long time. Mm. Um, and it just kind of became the normal and she had a lot of physical pain, which led huh. to an addiction to narcotics. Mm. And so my home didn't always feel safe to me, even though my parents were there yeah. and they loved me. It didn't always feel like a safe place to be. Oh, and wow. yet we couldn't get in the dirt together. Mm. You know, we just wanted to say, okay, everything is okay. Here's a bouquet of flowers. Here's a bouquet of flowers. Mom's mm. a little sick right now, but she'll be better. Just keep going on with your life. Yeah. We're going to keep going to church. We're going to keep hosting small group. And they didn't, your parents didn't have anybody to talk to about things. Not that I saw. I think it's just really hard to go there with people. Yeah. It's so yeah. hard to invite people yeah. into your mess. And so that was a lot of my childhood. Hmm. And it really came to a head right after Robert and I got married in 2010. My mom died by suicide. Mm. She was just, she was too sick and too tired to live mm. is what she said. And, mm. and so she took her own life. 
And all of a sudden, my faith was so shaken. Yeah, Who I is bet. God? What do I believe? Where? I mean, what foundation am I standing on? Man, that's so hard, Katie. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for sharing that with I know, us. That's like, such a it's, vulnerable part of the story. And it's and it's really special for you to share that with two women that you don't really know. I mean, I think it's beautiful that you're even doing it through the act of pulling out dirt and mm -hmm. and this is how you go there. And we hold that sacred. For yeah. you, what initiated yeah. you to go, I actually need to grieve or else I will rot. I think it actually started at one of my baby showers when I looked around years after my mom had died and I went, my mom is not here. Mm. She should be at a baby shower and mm. she's not here. You know, and anger comes up right away. Mom. And then you've got to do something with those feelings. With that, you can't let it fester you. Yeah. I think part of grieving and lamenting is doing it in community. Yeah. It's being willing to just like grab hands with sisters and say, this life is so hard. And so will you just stick your hands? It's kind of weird, okay. but we can do weird, you guys. So we can do weird. <laughs> we can do weird. Let's go. Let's I just get want weird us to with stick it. our hands in the dirt together. And if you feel the need to lament with your own stories, we can just do it together. Oh, Does that sound okay? Yes. As we're feeling the dirt, I just lament life this brokenness of this world, that it's not all flowers all mm. the time, you know? And I just wanna say that depression and anxiety and suicide, it sucks really, really bad mm, that, yeah. that we don't have minds that are perfect, this side of eternity, that our bodies are broken, that there are things we can't control, mm. you know? It sucks that my mom was gone, that she wasn't here for a baby shower, mm. and I miss her, yeah. and that's really mm. hard. It's hard to raise kids without my mom here. Flowers will come, but for right now, that's dirt. I think I'm lamenting a society that says that we have to be perfect yeah. to be successful, to be amazing, to be loved, to be seen, when really God has never said that. I'm lamenting that we still live in a world with women that are being abused, that are trying to brush it off and be strong for their babies mm. and their families and their careers and their image, when really what they need is someone to say, girl, you can cry here. Yeah. You can be sad here and you can be so afraid yeah. because you have every right to be afraid. Yeah. And you can just sit in that and not be strong. My husband and I both spend a lot of time with teenage boys who, that's their story. Yeah. Their parents um, are either in jail or can't take care of them. But it breaks my heart that they can't be with their families. Yeah. That protection, that love. That's a broken thing that I just want to say. It's just so sad. Thanks for doing that with me. Your seeds are really tiny, so just touch one if you can. Get oh, it like to stick on one? your finger. No, what are we doing? We press it all the way down? The thing about these seeds is that they're so small. They look like nothing. I mean, it looks dead. If you just left the seed out in this warm greenhouse, mm -hmm. it would fry. And that was true in my life too. You know, mm -hmm. had I just expected a flower to grow in my life without being willing to sit in the really hard, messy stuff, I, I would not be where I am today. But when you plant them in this soil that is mm -hmm. full of nutrients, God does something with it. I think in this moment, I find myself feeling such reverence for you and your story. You're gradual to open up and to feel, and I respect that and I honor that. And I think I feel safe with Tony because we've had a few episodes now to yep. learn to trust one to another. On and I want you to feel safe with us, with me, and we're honored to be in your presence. And I feel that, that sacredness. Yeah. I just wonder if you can take us back into the moments of like getting the call about your mom and being freshly married and what that meant for you. Yeah, that's mm. a lot to unpack. Yeah. Well, I can tell you when I got the call about my mom, mm. I think it was like the first time. I almost wanted to be like, hold up. Like I knew mom was sick, but I did not know it was this bad. This bad. Mm. Yes, and so I think I walked around like in a daze really? for a while. And yes. 
I think I told you guys, like, I grew up in church. Yeah. And I thought I knew who God was. Yeah. And I thought I knew what the Bible mm. said. Yeah. Uh, but all of a sudden I felt like, how is this God, the same God, yeah. the psalmist cry out about mm. where they say like, he, he's gonna be with me. He's yep. gonna deliver me. He's gonna stay with me. Never once did you walk alone through yep. the fire. And I yeah. just kept thinking, it looks like she walked alone. To me, it looks like yeah. he actually didn't pull her out of the furnace, you know? Mm. And what do you do with that? Sometimes it's almost harder to ask the questions of, God, why weren't you there for this person I love versus why aren't you here for me? I can handle God yes. leaving me high and dry, but you're gonna leave someone I love? Well, that's mm. where I started. And where it got mm. me was, I can't ask her. Like, I can't ask my mom, were you pursuing the Lord? Did you sense his nearness? So I had this recurring nightmare the whole year after my mom died. And in my nightmare, she was in this body of water and she was drowning. She was calling out for help. And Christ was on like a pillar right in front of her. Mm. And that's all I could see. You know, there she was crying, crying out for help. And there he was just looking at her. Mm. I mean, I just remember thinking like, yes, Lord, send her a life preserver. Why, like why didn't you? Why didn't you, you had everything at your disposal. Why didn't you send that to her? Mm. And I really had to wrestle with that for a long time. Yeah. Like I wanted to say, why, why didn't you help my mom? I think she loved mm. you. I have her Bible. I've got like her journal and there's the stigma in the church, you know, like if you oh, yeah, commit suicide, that's hell for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely you didn't have enough faith and Mm -hmm. I just had to wonder why, like he didn't heal her mind. Did she have another option? She was so depressed. Yeah. You know, she, mm. she became addicted. Did she have another option? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I still don't know the answer, Mariah. Yeah. Like, and I just have to kind of sit in that, mm. the not knowing. Yeah. And what do you do with that? Were you angry at God ever? Angry. Or what were some of those emotions? I felt really um, alone mm. and betrayed maybe. Mm, betrayed. And like, where it got mm. me was, I needed to sit there and challenge God's word. Mm. He actually gave me this verse from Psalm 119. It said, before I was afflicted, oh. I went astray, but now I keep your word. That was like the first verse that came to me. And I thought, I have not gone astray. Like, look at me, Lord, I have not done drugs. I haven't yeah. been sleeping around. Yeah. I have, you know, mm. like here, I've been a good girl all my life. What do yep. you mean I went astray until mm. I was afflicted? And pretty quickly he showed me that I mm. like grew up in this bubble. My family was pretty on the outside where I lived was pretty, mm. but inside I was so legalistic, you guys. Mm. And I thought that I could earn my salvation yeah. and I thought I could earn God's love. Like I yeah. had to undo everything mm. I thought I knew about God. So through this yeah. affliction, I could just feel, I mean, it was gonna take years, but yeah. I could feel like, oh, we're about to seriously erase some things Ooh. and get down and dirty and, and figure out what my theology actually is. Yeah. Another passage he gave me was Deuteronomy 8. It's a, the Israelites are wandering mm. in the desert, you know, and God says, I humbled you and I let you hunger. And I think I just sat there like in the, he humbled you and let you hunger Ooh, for a while. I mean, it's sure. not like right away that he, yeah. he immediately feeds you and you just move mm. on with your life. Sometimes you just have to sit there being humbled mm. and being hungry mm. and realizing everything I've tried to fill my life with mm. is not working. Goodness, Katie. Yeah. You're a brave woman and you have obviously come such a long way and the healing has been slow and gradual and I personally really respect that you had to actually open your heart to feel all mm. of those things one door one corridor at a time growing up would you have been the one to save your mom like in yes the house, the I was kid? the oldest yeah. and so mm. I I think I care took my younger brother and sister mm. like my dad was away at work and my mom was a lot of times in her bedroom by herself. Mm -hmm. And so it fell on me to do mm -hmm. a lot of the things. Mm -hmm. I think especially emotionally, I yeah. carried the weight, like who, who's yeah. unhappy right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me just shoulder that. And so I, I didn't know how to have my own emotions growing up. I wanted to mm -hmm. run far wow. away from mm -hmm. feeling sadness. I didn't know what to say or how to process mm -hmm. it. And so I just didn't, mm -hmm. I just kind of ignored mm -hmm. it. And I think that's a lot of what my mom did. She just kind of hid. And my dad has always said, there's no healing in the dark. I feel really protective of you. Mm. I'm just gonna be honest, mm -hmm. because when you started to talk about being the oldest, being this like mini caregiver, it connects with me deeply. I wish that I could be yeah. 
with 21 year old Katie and say like, you actually don't have to lead anybody right now. Mm. You can just sit in the grief of losing your mama. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay. This is what you do when you lose a parent. You can mm. just be sad. And I think maybe on the days where, and you're just like, man, I wish that I had my mama right here. Mm. I wish that I can just be right next to you saying like, look at your babies, look at what you did. Mm. Look at what you've done. Look at how brave you've been. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm feeling really overprotective. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so I do have a question about the challenging thing because that did keep me up all night. Mm. What would you say good came out of challenging God's word? It's all been good. It's Every been single good. bit of it has been good. Wow. Because here's the thing, especially when you grow up in church, like somebody hands you their theology. Yeah. You know, like this is who God is. This is mm -hmm. what you should and shouldn't do. And so that's just what I did my whole life. I didn't have a why behind it. Yeah, you were just doing your thing. Yes, I didn't really know who God was from my own personal study. And mm. so my mom's death pushed me into God's word where I could really decide on my own, mm. wh what do I believe about God? And what do I think his word says? And let me dig in. All of a sudden I was reading the gospels fresh and looking at Christ mm. and who is gentle and lowly and so kind yeah. to sinners and didn't expect perfection from anybody. And mm. so I was like, here I am trying to do all of the right things. And yeah. he is not impressed if I do or don't date. He's not impressed if I do or don't drink. Mm. What he wants is for me to come into his presence and to sit there That's and to beautiful. get to know him and to talk to him and to do mm. my days with him. I understand the importance of wrestling with God's word, but like I'm I'm trying to under I'm trying to picture what life would look like if you went through something difficult and just sat back and were like, okay, like everything's like I don't know anyone who mm. would do that. Yeah. It's not honest. Like what is the benefit of wrestling? Why should people wrestle? Mm -hmm. And But who doesn't? That's my question. But I think I think sometimes we don't I think from, from what I understand, I think the wrestling is honestly where the faith building comes in because the opposite is just like throwing your hands up and giving up. There are people that are just like, I'm not even going to try to press into it. Mm -hmm. Then there's the other side of what you're talking about where people are just like, I'm going to push it under the rug and I'm just going to pretend everything's fine. And yeah. that's fake peace. Or blindly accepting it. Or bl like, but what's the benefit of that? He invites us to come and to mm. wrestle with him. You know, like, yeah. let's, let's do business. Let's talk about this. Mm. Maybe testing is another good word. Mm. Like... I see in scripture, God, that you say that if we cast our anxieties on you, you're, mm, you true. will um, give us peace that passes understanding. I'm going to see if that's true. You know, oh. and what I've found in my life is that every time I hold a promise up and I say, will you meet me here? I'm starting a business. I feel so anxious. Philippians 4. Oh. Yes. Peace that passes understanding. Or like, yeah. man, I, I long to love my husband so well. I need wisdom on it. James 1 says you give wisdom. Are you going to give me wisdom? You going to do that? I see yes. what you're saying. Okay, let me let me throw in your way. I'm struggling to allow myself to think positively about mm. something good coming my way. We were talking about this on our check-in on the way yeah. here. Yeah. It's like we're so used to settling for the scraps. I'm scared to hope for abundance because what if that doesn't come and I'm going to be left disappointed? How would you wrestle with Luke, that feeling? I would have said Luke. Lamentations Luke. 3, just the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. Mm, like I can't first. hope in anything else. Yeah, I got to hope in him. And yeah. will he come through no matter what? Absolutely. Huh. But kind of what you said, Mariah, like, what do you do? You rehearse that in your head. So yeah. this is what happened. I was just making jewelry. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I was in the word every day, like taking in my daily bread. And no longer was a necklace that had a feather on it, just a feather necklace. I saw Psalm 91. Like, the, <gasps> like there are these feathers over us. It the around Lord's. you. You know, like, this is the parallel bracelet I'm wearing right now. This is Psalm 1611. Um, he will make your path straight. Like, there is continuous joy when you're with him. Oh, see, that's good. Mm. I'm trying to get better at memorizing promises. And memorization these days is hard. You know why? Because we there's a lot going on in there. I don't have any more brain capacity. There's already so much information in here. It's too much. <laughs> yes. I, said I don't have any more room. So having, like, a little totem, a little piece a of jewelry. Yes, so my hope. That's so really helpful. Every piece That's of jewelry great. you saw yesterday, everything mm -hmm. I'm wearing is yeah. attached to a verse of scripture Katie. and designed around it so that oh when you look gosh. at this, you go, oh yeah, like, am I walking oh, in snap. step with the Lord? <gasps> Am I trusting him? This right. is literally yeah. how I learn things. Me too. And so that's, that's so I needed great. wearable reminders so that, con okay. you know, like I'm literally washing the dishes and yeah. I've got scripture. It would make me think about it. She's training her own She's thoughts. Training her mind. I got you girls Beautiful. two things. I was praying what over call? what just felt like you to me. And I'm I wrote, I picked out a Gifts necklace. Gifts are my language. Okay. Who's first? Who's first? Okay. You up, girl. No. So this is the water necklace, okay? And on it, it says, come see. I'm going to read the verse. This is from 
the woman at the well. So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? So this woman, if you remember the story, like she's a mess. She, how many husbands did she have? Five. And she was so embarrassed, <laughs> but Jesus looked at her and said, I know, I know who you are and I love you anyway. And this goes on to say that she says, come see. And her whole town is saved yeah. because she's willing to be vulnerable and to share her broken past. And right. I saw this and I was like, oh, that's Tony. This is me. This is Tony. And I, I just need you to know that I think you're a come see woman. I'm a Let come me just see. use my broken past to, to tell you all about Christ. Come oh. and see. So this one is yours. Tony, she sees you. I love this, Katie. Right, you get one of my very first pieces. This is the encounter necklace. Okay. So it's a little piece of metal and it's bending down and it's from Psalm 116. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. And I see you as a woman who longs to pray more and who longs to walk by the Spirit. So this piece just reminds me of you and I want it to be a reminder that God is literally bending down to listen to all of your prayers. And it's worth coming to him over and over and over again. Okay, that's great. Well, this Thank just you. truly Thank makes me so all much. weepy. This is really, really kind. This makes me so thankful that we're neighbors because I'm gonna be circling back with you on a lot of questions in the years to come, but I, I, I love how we like saw the whole warehouse. We saw all the different pieces. We came at your family. And all this time, I, I never knew that your jewelry was associated with memories and scriptures and promises. And you know what's amazing about this mm -hmm. is that none of this would have happened without my mom and her story and her death. And mm -hmm. God just, he redeems every, every bit of it, every bit of it. I mean, this, I did not think this business would be what it is today when I casually named it Dear Mushka, but here I am. I get to tell her story all the time mm -hmm. and I get to watch him plant seeds with his word mm -hmm. and I get to watch them grow. I get to hear women's stories when they say, man, like this necklace really blessed me. Mm -hmm. the, I, I'm remembering God's word through this and he I'm never gonna know times. all the answers about her life, mm -hmm. but I can look at scripture and I can mm -hmm. hold on to these promises. Mm -hmm. And in the mm -hmm. meantime, I can watch him just flowers, flowers, just, flowers, flowers. Just using the scraps. Mm -hmm. All of it. All of mm -hmm. it. Oh. Absolutely. It's okay.